This is Neil Patwari. I'm going to talk about Shannon's channel capacity theorem. The main result is that for any given signal to noise ratio or EB over N naught, we can calculate the maximum capacity of a given channel. The channel we're going to study is the additive Gaussian noise channel. That is that the receiver on dimension I measures the amount of the, the waveform that was sent plus some Gaussian noise that is independent across the dimensions. And we'll say that this is Gaussian and it is zero mean and it has a variance that we derive to be n naught over two, but in this lecture we're gonna call it E sub n, um, and I'll just remind ourselves that that is equal to n naught over two. The other thing that we have is a limited transmit power. And the first channel capacity theorem that was for a limited transmit power came from Ralph Hartley. And Hartley, in the early 1900s, came up with this capacity theorem that said, if I have a one-dimensional PAM system and it is limited to positive only, amplitudes. This was the case when they were doing a telegraph. So the amplitudes are from 0 to A, and the question was how many symbols can I place in between 0 and A and still have a reliable communication system? Well Hartley said that we are going to set this A delta large enough so that the system is reliable. He didn't really define what reliable meant, but presumably you'd pick it big enough so that you were okay with whatever errors that would occur. And of course there would be errors because the noise is Gaussian, so no matter what A delta you pick, there's a chance that the distance between uh, symbols would be exceeded by the noise. Okay, and in this case, the number of symbols we can have is 1 plus A divided by A delta. Okay, and that's how many symbols you see here on the bottom picture with symbols spaced A delta apart. So this means that the number of bits you can send in one symbol is log base 2 of M or log base 2 of 1 plus A over A delta. And he said that the symbol rate, the maximum symbol rate, R sub S, or 1 over t sub s is less than or equal to 2b. This corresponds with the spacing of 1 over 2 t sub s, which we had said we could get orthogonal waveforms that were separated by a frequency of 1 over 2 t sub s, and they could be orthogonal. So this would be the maximum symbol rate. And in this case, the maximum bit rate for this system is the symbol rate times log base 2 of m, so that's 2b times log base 2 of m, and m is a over a delta plus 1. Okay, so this is great, except that this is not very well defined. It's not clear how to select a delta. The other thing that's not clear, what happens is we add more dimensions. This is a one-dimensional communication system using one orthogonal waveform, and we could use an arbitrary number of waveforms in our communication system. Next to improve on this result was Claude Shannon. When Shannon came around, his key insight was to let n go to infinity, Okay, where n is the number of dimensions or orthogonal waveforms. And you might be saying, well, you, you can't let n go to infinity. Well, you can use orthogonal waveforms in the sense that the symbol that you send at time 0 and the symbol that you send at time 1 and the symbol that you send at time 2, we know that these are orthogonal. We've chosen our pulse shape to make subsequent symbols orthogonal. So if we are willing to trade latency, if we're willing to say, Okay, well, consider many symbols at once. Make that my new symbol. Then my latency will go up because I'm going to use n symbols. 
So, um, which means that I'm going to have to wait and T sub S until I get all of the pulses in my receiver and I can look up that uh, measurement on the constellation diagram, which is now n dimensional. But it is possible, it just adds latency. And by letting n go to infinity, Shannon goes to this limiting case where we get to apply the law of large numbers. What it says is that in the limit, as n goes to infinity, this measurement, 1 over n times the sum of z sub i squared from i equals 0 to n minus 1, so over all dimensions, this is going to be less than or equal to the variance, the variance e n that we described before. And this will happen, this this inequality is true with probability one. That means that this is going to happen. So it also, in a sense, this, uh, this says that, now remember z sub i is equal to the noise. So it's the, what I measure minus the symbol I was trying to send squared. It's now less than square root of little n times e sub n. It's essentially in a ball. This is the distance from the measurement to the sensor. It is a sphere, a hypersphere in n dimensions. And our maximum power We can write it as x sub i squared summed over all dimensions. This uh, average over all dimensions is going to be limited to some transmit power, some maximum transmit power e. And that will also lead to an argument that all of my symbols are within Sorry, this should be 0 to n minus 1 because our numbering usually starts at 0. This number is less than or equal to, oh, and I should put a square root here and here. This distance from the origin is less than or equal to the square root of n times e. So my question is, this is a very big radius because it's, the maximum radius of a uh, distance from the origin of a symbol in our constellation. This is the radius of kind of how far apart the noise is going to be from each symbol. So if we look at it in two dimensions, which is easier to draw, you can see that this is kind of corresponding to what Hartley said, but in two dimensions. So this would be our E, and this radius here would be our square root of n times e sub n. And this would be not e, it would be actually square root of n e. And when n is equal to 2, I would replace the little n by 2. But in general, we would use higher dimensions. You can see I can pack a lot of points, a lot of little circles into this big circle. In three dimensions, I could pack lots of little balls inside of a big ball. Or just imagine marbles in a bigger sphere. Or in n dimensions, I could fit lots of little hyperspheres inside that big hypersphere. If I do the geometry and I calculate what m is limited to, it's equal to 1 plus e divided by e sub n to the n over 2. This takes n symbols to send. So what that means is that my maximum rate, I'm going to call it R max, is equal to that uh, 2b times log 2 of m, the number of symbols that I can fit in this n-dimensional hypersphere. But it, since it takes me n symbols to send it, I have to divide by n to get the bit rate. This is the number of bits per n symbols. So this is going to be n symbols in the bottom. 
And because my m is limited as given above, my r max then is less than or equal to 2b over n log base 2 of 1 plus e over e sub n. And then the n over 2, because it's a logarithm, I'm going to take it down and have the n over 2 over here, which is then going to cancel here. And my r max is going to be the bandwidth times log base 2 of 1 plus e over en. Okay, and when I translate this en back into n naught over 2, and I translate this energy, energy is p times t sub s, and in terms of the bandwidth, uh, the bandwidth is greater than or equal to 1 over 2 t sub s. So p over 2 times the bandwidth. And so what I get here is the bandwidth log base 2 of 1 plus p over n naught times b. The 2's cancel. And I have n naught times b is the noise power. This is the signal to noise ratio. Signal power divided by noise power. which people call SNR for signal to noise ratio. So in, in that sense, I can write this as bandwidth times log base two of one plus the SNR. And that is the most common form given for Shannon's capacity. But I will say that this isn't my favorite form for this expression because all these terms are in terms of power I actually am sometimes just interested in looking at Shannon's capacity in terms of energy. And in that case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put R max and I'm going to divide by B. This R max divided by B gives me the maximum channel efficiency in terms of bit rate per hertz. And this is going to be equal, well, less than or equal to log base 2. I'm going to take this power and I'm going to write it as energy per bit times the bit rate. And then in the bottom my n naught and b I'm going to put into two different fractions. So I've got rb over b which is the bandwidth efficiency. I've got the bandwidth efficiency over here. Close that parentheses and essentially what I can write this as is this expression that the bandwidth efficiency limit is equal to 1 plus eb over n naught times the bandwidth efficiency limit. And this is a difficult expression to solve for the bandwidth efficiency because I have the bandwidth efficiency inside a logarithm on one side and the linear bandwidth efficiency on the other side. You need to use some kind of function solver to solve for the eb over n naught relationship with bandwidth efficiency. But you can do it. And we have shown this figure in previous lectures that shows the bandwidth efficiency from the Shannon bound in blue. Then you can compare your modulation and its performance in terms of eb over n naught versus bandwidth efficiency. And you can see how far away you are from Shannon's bound. And you can see that these modulations that we've covered are pretty far from the bound. So this is why we introduce forward error correction. Forward error correction essentially increases the dimension of our modulation. And in that higher dimension, it places symbols, these codes as they call them, as far apart as they can from each other so that if there are errors, those errors can be corrected. It essentially tries to use the idea that higher dimensionality is a way to get more reliability. And that's what we're going to cover in the next segment.